So starting off, I've been playing D&D &D for about three and a half years. It's a game that I enjoy mostly because I'm an actor at heart, yet this experience almost ruined it for me. So let me just give a rundown of the group. I'll use the rules instead of actual names. DM. He was a chill guy, also my best friend. He was really more of a story driven person and loved when characters were fleshed out as it made his job easier to write stories around them. Hobgoblin fighter. Me. Pretty much a case of don't judge a book by its cover. He looked really mean and serious, but was actually a huge sweetheart that always helped anyone no matter how trivial the request. Half elf cleric. Life. She was a girl that was friends with the DM and I talked to her a few times. She was there mostly for the story element, but took enough time to make sure she was good during combat. Her character was a kind soul that was nice to all, but if you pissed her off or offended her, she held quite the grudge. Tiefling wizard, another girl, but was friends with the cleric and actually played D&D like twice before and was very ready. Her character was almost a shy outcast that stuck her nose in the books, but came out of her shell when it came to an ancient history and stories. And finally, the problem player, Human Barbarian. Probably one of the more cliche characters I've seen in a long time, and his character was a bit cringeworthy. Pretty much, he was this dumb, tough as nails guy, was raised by bears, and is legend in the forest known as Rock Crusher, and was six feet, and muscles so big he couldn't wear a t-shirt. His exact words. Now don't get me wrong, the story could be cool, but there was no details. That was all to it and apparently he's been playing for two years or so. So the problem was that the barbarian had a crush on both the girls in the group and spent most of the sessions trying to make his character this badass person and woo them with that. At least that's what we got from it. The problem was, the girls had no interest in him. The wizard eventually developed a crush on me and to this day we're still dating. So the first session was where this problem began to emerge. Before we even played, we sat down and kind of ran through each one's character and explained their backstories. When I explained mine, the wizard, cleric and DM kind of praised me before we even started for kind of fun and unique character. Though I disagreed a bit. Then the barbarian loudly yells when I try to describe his personality. Me. But yeah, he looks kind of mean and serious, but he's a huge sweet hot barbarian. Sounds like a card. My character is this badass man who was raised by bears and was named Stonebaker for the time he broke a boulder with his bare hand. And I just remained silent, but I could see the other three roll their eyes. So we start off. We began in a tavern. The only people together was the clerk and the wizard who had picked a job from the board and decided they needed others to help them. My character was sitting in the corner reading a war book and Barbarian was drinking at the tavern. We were the only other two in the bar besides the bartender. The wizard was unsure to ask the two large men, since they both looked intimidating, and the cleric was going to ask my character something. The barbarian walks over to mine and demands to fight me. Barbarian tells the hobgoblin to fight me. Me. In voice. Sir, I'm not going to fight anyone for no reason. Barbarian. Tell him I want to fight him because I know he's a bad person since he's a hobgoblin. Me. In voice. I assure you, I mean you no harm. Fighting is pointless. The wizard and cleric kind of look at the DM as if maybe they should intervene, but decided their characters wouldn't. Barbarians swing at the hobgoblin with my fist because fuck hobgoblins misses. So then, my character stands up and attempts to restrain him, fearing the man is highly aggressive, and swings right back. I hit and take a chunk of his health, dealing 4 damage out of his 14. So the fight continues with him missing almost all of his hits and my character knocking him out. This is where my character comes out. He frantically looks at the cleric and the wizard and notice the holy symbol on the cleric's chest. Me, in voice. Ma'am, can you heal this man? I think I may have hurt him. Before looking at the bartender. I'll pay for any damages, but please don't alert the city guard of this brawl. I believe he may have been acting on instincts. This help created the reason for the cleric and wizard to get involved and their character realized that the hobgoblin wasn't so mean and scary, but kind. The barbarian, pissed at his chance to establish himself as the strongest guy failed. So after this, the group decided to go on a bounty for a kobold cult leader. Pretty simple dungeon crawl, yet it had to be one of the most irritating sections with the barbarian. For one thing, he was self-centered and thought that this was a story about him, interrupting by telling the DM what they should do before I shut that down real quick. Constantly he ran into combat, took like two points of damage and demanded the cleric and wizard constantly either buff or heal him. He was constantly saying that the cleric shouldn't attack but focus on making sure he's alive. My character was kind of left by himself 
as the barbarian made a big fuss when everyone wasn't looking at him. So my character was off on his own and I decided to make him think he was being excluded because he wasn't trusted by the group and had a talk with the other three when they were taking a long rest. Me. I see I haven't exactly give you all a reason to trust me. I truly mean no harm. I only wish to help. Claire. It's just, you are kind of known for the British conquests, but you fight so good that the gods might take notice. Wizard. I think, um, you're fine, but you do look scary. Me. Is it the eye patch? I would try smiling, but it seems to scare people more. Barbarian. Out of game. Quit your bitching, you little bitch. If you weren't a hobgoblin, this wouldn't be a problem. How about you weren't born? Problem solved. Honestly, my shoe would bounce off his head at this point. Oh, I could be dealing with I'd get all my dice and just fuck it at him. <laughs> he looked me in the face, and it took me a second to realise that he wasn't speaking in character, and actually was talking about my character choice. Immediately, the wizard shrinks into the seat, and the room is silent, and we just resume play. After about 30 more minutes, we come across a kobold warrior riding atop a red guard drake, and it would have been a great fight if the barbarian didn't get knocked out first and complain the entire time. Pretty much, the drake did max damage to him, and his character went down like a bag of rocks in water. So, my character uses two-handed axes to try and hit the kobold atop and crits. The drake somewhat worry of my character now, and targeted me. I managed to barely survive only because the wizard and cleric backing me up, while the barbarian kept getting happy whenever I got close to death. After this, we ended the session since it had been like 3 hours. Afterwards, everyone else was waiting on their rides. I was staying because me and my friend were going to hang out, and the barbarian was trying to boast about how cool and badass his character was, and how probably all our characters respected him. Okay. <laughs> But this guy's like two foot. Yeah, yeah. He he's like three foot four. Yeah, you can tell. Pure or like man. size two feet. Absolute man. Yeah. Yeah. And he was getting really close to the clerk, and she kept moving away from him without getting the message. The wizard was telling him that what he said to me was kind of unfair, and that I made a wonderful character compared to his. He gets upset real fast, and was like, "Well, he's playing a monster race. That makes like no sense for him to join a party." He does not fit in with the rest of the group. Why are you defending him? You just met him. He's a fucking tryhard at this game. At this point, I'm a little upset my character was getting shit on, despite his whole story and personality actually fitting well with the group, and was kind of unique. Yet, I didn't say anything because it was no reason to start an argument. He leaves in a fit when his ride comes. The clerk and the wizard were smiling and way less awkward when he left and were joking with me in the DM and saying they had fun and we each were kind of telling each other how great the character was. It ended with the wizard hugging me and the clerk high-fiving and saying they had a lot of fun and left. This was the first session. It gets much worse and he really gets creepy. So where we left off last time, the barbarian got mad that no one liked his badass character. So the DM naturally talked to him privately and explained how what he did was indeed rude and childish, and he had only one more chance before he would be asked to leave. The group agreed with the DM, but not completely. The barbarian actually improved a bit. He was way less toxic when it came to out of character during the meet itself, and was a bit more focused on defining his character. So during the second meet, where our characters are now doing jobs for a blacksmith to find a magical item of Legends combat was a bit better. Though he still demanded that everyone be focused on him, and making sure that he was being cool, and Joel and be left on his own to eventually come and bail him and the group out. So soon, I start to talk to the wizard and cleric outside of the meets, and we eventually hang out in a big group, and sometimes the barbarian might just join us, sometimes not. Yet soon I began to get close to the wizard, me and her bonding over our mutual taste in nerdy stuff in D&D. Yet at the time, I didn't know the barbarian was trying to swoon her and pester her about dating him along with the cleric and I didn't find out until one meet where we decided to kick him. This was around two months later, and we're 10th level, and we agreed to do some more roleplay focused missions, as the last few meets were go here, kill this, at the request, or rather, order of the barbarian. So before the DM had made a small character arcs for every character, the group helped the wizard convince her family to let her keep adventuring during a ball. The cleric had to clear out a dungeon full of undead to put rest to your brother, he had died there, and Barbarian hunted down his bare parents, and rescued them from the mysterious plague. 
So pretty much the group finds out about Jolin's past when they visit the village where Joaquin died and Jolin was born. So Jolin's backstory was that he was the captain of a hobgoblin bandit group that raided several villages cut from the cities. Despite taking their supplies, he never actually killed anyone but knocked them out or maimed them. One day adventurers show up and wreck him and his men and in the process loses his left eye. A single doctor decided to spare Jolin because he himself was spared. Jolin upon receiving this kindness was touched and after several weeks of spending time with these people, helping them and learning from them, his whole outlook in life changed. Seeing himself as a parasite before deciding to instead become an adventurer and show people the kindness he was shown, no matter how trivial the task may be. So as we get to the village, villagers begin to unload questions onto him, happy to see he found a group to join him and such. So as they sit down with the mayor, he explains that the town may need their help in more mundane tasks, but the barbarian starts his old shit again, which seemed odd as the character bondage during another meet when they killed a room full of undead by themselves. The barbarian claiming, I respect your strength, we are brothers of the blade now, which made me happy that the group would be united. Yet the second we started, something felt off about him. Barbarian. So, chief of this village, why do you and your people love such a filthy monster? He could be deceiving you all to kill you. The mayor becomes angered quickly. Young man, Jolin is no monster. He's a man who's done some wrong and paid the price. Instead of becoming more corrupt, he turned it around for the better. Barbarian. Done some wrong? What the hell did you do, monster? His character yells, pulling out his axe ready to fight. Wizard. Hey, does it matter what he done? He's helped us and bailed us out of trouble more times than not. Just a few days ago, you two seemed somewhat close. Claire, sit down, you big brute. Jolin is, well, a sweetheart at times. I doubt he's a... Jolin, I raided this village for several months for supplies, maiming everyone who got in the way of my bandit grip, I say, describing an almost depressed look in his face. So the barbarian attacks my character, swinging his axe around, trying to hit Jolin, claiming he was vile and evil monster. Now this I don't mind, because it made a lot of sense but it kind of contradicted his many earlier statements. The mayor stops the fight and explains Jolin's backstory. Afterwards, the group splits up to kind of help people where needed, doing skill checks around the town to save them time and even make it better than before. When I was done, the group stayed in home for Jolin when he did come and visit. This is where the barbarian lost all favor. So throughout the campaign, the barbarian aggressively flirted with any female character, alluding to his muscles or his, um sword down under, Ew. which we asked him to stop constantly. So when Jolin and the clerk are going to get some food, the barbarian tries to romance the wizard. Barbarian. So wizard, I know you know that I'm truly the strongest warrior, but I'm also an emotional man when I need. I wouldn't say strongest. Jolin gives you a run for your money. Barbarian. Now that's a bit harsh to say to someone you love. I forcibly he said that, by the way. Cup her face and kiss her. Wait, he says this out loud? Yeah. Ew. The wizard, as I described in real life, was super shy and never really got mad. Yet the glare she gave him almost scared me a little. The DM looked as if he was pondering whether to stop it. Wizard. I used shocking grasp on him to try and get him to let go. She rolls a natural 20. The whole table erupts in nothing but laughter. Except Barbarian as the DM describes shocking his entire body and falling back, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> he then explodes on me. This is all your fucking fault, and I'm just confused. The whole grip going silent as he rants. You think you're this cool, charming guy, but you're not. You're a try-hard at fucking role-playing game. You're an ugly black guy. Oh shit, <laughs> throwing the nigga card in. <laughs> that can't do shit besides play games. And ever since I've joined, you've been trying so hard to embarrass me in front of the girls. And great job, because now one of them has fallen for you. Whoa, why the hell are you getting so mad? Before we could even breathe, the wizard explodes. You are such a fucking child. You were doing so good. And the second I tell I like someone, you start acting like an asshole and try to force our characters to get together. That's bullshit and it's annoying. I'm not sure how you found out, but it's none of your business, especially if you're going to harass them for something they can't control. Look, you like me, but I can't like someone as arrogant and as selfish as you. And don't you dare insult him. He's wonderful compared to you. 
Honestly, the, the, yeah. the writer sounds like he's talking himself up a wee yeah, bit Yeah, he, do, he does, to be honest with you. It's like, look at me. Look I'm, at me. I'm perfect. This guy is <laughs> such a child. Uh, and I got the theme weeds yeah. at the end. <laughs> the time time. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure neither party sounds that great. Yeah. The clerk then hops in. So, let me get this straight. You've been sweet-talking me for the last month, talking about how wonderful I am and stuff, pretended to be concerned about one of my friends and get a bit of gossip off her, while also crushing on her, clearly sounding pissed. The barbarian realising how bad he'd just fucked up before the DM goes, take your shit, leave my house, I'm not going to allow this bullshit drama to ruin the game. So this sparked a talk between me and the wizard, and soon we went on a date, and we're dating to this day. Though this is not the end of my stories, I have several more about the campaigns I'm currently in besides this one. 